Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to continue our study of functions in JavaScript. This video is going to be all about the return keyword. Now the return keyword is only used inside of functions and it is an extremely important keyword. Basically what it does is it defines the output of the function. I like to think of a function like a machine, like a big box that has a bunch of machine stuff inside of it. And what you do is you put stuff into one side and the machine does stuff to it, does magic, works its magic, and then it spits out on the other end the result, the output. Inside of functions, the return keyword is what tells this function what to output. Up until now, in our functions, we've been simply console.logging things. So if you remember, we did function, I don't know, we might call it my func, and it'll take in a number. And what, we, what we've been doing is console.log, number something like that so now if i call my func and pass it a five it console.logs a five but all it's doing is writing this to the console it's not actually outputting anything you'll notice every time we've run that you've seen that undefined with that left arrow that is the return value from that function this function is outputting nothing it's outputting undefined so if i tried to set a variable equal to that so um const x equals my func 5 and it says 5 right there but if I look at x and hit enter x is undefined because my func doesn't actually return anything let's give you another example square function square number console.log oops console.log num times num so if I run square on 5, it console.logs 25, but if I let y equal square of 5, y is still undefined. However, if I redefine the function square, function square num return num times num, Now I can set y equals square of five, and you'll notice the difference. Number one, it did not have this, doesn't have undefined put out, but also the 25 has that arrow next to it in the console letting me know that was returned. So now if I call y, it is equal to 25. So that's why the return keyword is so important is because it actually gives your function substance. It actually makes them spit back out some output. There are a few things you need to know about the return keyword. The first and probably most important is that whenever a function hits a return, it stops running. It returns whatever that says, and then it stops, even if there's code after it. So let's write a function, say name, or say hi, and then put in the name, and then let's console.log hi, or hello, plus name return name oops I'm used to coding in a actual IDE instead of the browser so I have to shift enter return name and then shift enter console.log this won't run and you'll notice my browser is actually telling me that there's an error or not an error but this code is unreachable it'll never never be run so if we actually run say hi and we'll just put my name in there well we get two things first off the return is Josh just like we expected because we told it to return name and it said hello Josh but it did not console.log this this won't run the reason is because once it hits that return it will finish this line this this whatever it's returning and then it stops it does not run anything else another thing to note about functions is that every single function will return something if you don't tell it to return anything, it returns undefined. That's why all those console.logs we were doing earlier and everything we've been doing constantly says undefined, undefined, undefined is because those are functions that have been returning undefined. One useful convention inside of functions is that you can use if statements to choose between return values. So for example, let's say we wrote a function times 10. I think we've done this one before. Times 10. And then inside of there, we're going to put an if statement. If the type of x is number so in other words if x is a number 
return x times 10. I forgot to shift enter again. So shift enter return that's not a number. Now notice I did not have to put an else here. The reason I didn't have to put an else is because this is going to be hit, and if it is, this is going to return and it's going to stop. This is not going to return. So I didn't have to put an else. So if that if x is a number, this will run, return x times 10, and then this will be ignored because it'll stop. If x is not a number, then this will be returned. So if I do times 10 and put in a 5 inside, why are we not going inside? Why is this difficult? There we go. Times 10, 5 gives me 50. Times 10 high. That's not a number. So you can put in logic inside your functions to return different things based on whatever your input is. And that's the gist of the return keyword. We're going to get more into that later. You're going to get a ton of practice with return and writing functions. But for now, that's it. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks. Thanks.